Hey guys, this is Roger Siegel. Um, welcome to another video review. Um, this is a battle of the multi-tools. Um, we have the SOG Power Lock right here, the Gonzo 2015 PRB or whatever it's called. I can't exactly remember. The Leatherman Pulse, the very controversial Leatherman Pulse. And this little guy, the little, the little Gerber Dime. Um, before I go any further, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell thing for any notifications for any future videos. Um, yeah, this is a, a, a basically a comparison for what, what they'd be used for, um, what the best value is, uh, uh, which one I prefer the most. Some are good for everyday carry, some are good for heavy-duty purposes, obviously. Uh, you know, some are good for the outdoors. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of compare compare them, and uh, so sit back and uh, enjoy and uh, watch the battle of the multi tools. Favorite of these multi tools and the ones that I carry every day, believe it or not, is this little guy, the uh, Gerber Dime. Uh, I can't tell you how much I use this and how functional it actually is. And you know, Gerber's taken a lot of heat for um, putting out some really crappy tools um, over the past few years. And um, this particular tool is just so functional. They really did it right in a lot of ways. So let's, let's just go through all four tools here. Uh, Gerber Dime here, obviously, a micro tool. You can attach this to your keychain. It's um, got some great, great tools to it. Uh, you know, and I like how everything folds out. It has, let's check out the tools, a little blade which is actually a very functional blade and very, very sharp. Let's see what else this has. The package opener, which I use all the time. Now, remember, now on this, you know, these don't lock, which you wouldn't expect on a micro tool like this. Uh, a little package opener, so it's great for those, like, plastic sealed packs that just drive you fucking nuts. Uh, this little edge is really, really good for, I don't know how much well the camera's picking that up because I'm kind of on the side here. But really, really uh, uh, a worthwhile tool for helping you out uh, while opening packages. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got the blade there. Anything else? No, that's the only two on this side. Then, obviously, you have the main tool is the pliers. And it really works great. It's a little needle nose pliers if you can't get to something, if you just need to adjust something for light torque jobs. It's really, really good. Bottle opener use it all the time. You get stuck with a beer, you don't have a bottle opener, you don't have to do the old smash it on the corner trick or, you know, show somebody how cool you are with your lighter trick. You got a bottle opener right there. This thing weighs next to nothing, too. So that's that's another really cool thing about this. It can really go with you everywhere. I always bring it as a companion when I'm out camping to a main blade. Um, if you have, like, a really heavy becker or even a cheaper knife like a Schrade or something like that, but it's a heavy knife, perfect companion tool and I just I just love this I, I think this is the best micro tool on the market let's check out some of the other tools here so and you have a little flathead does the job then you have a little it's like a, du a dual head so you can use this for Phillips well I guess that's really just for Phillips there it's weird there's sort of a filey kind of edge on it that would be I think useless for just about anything. Um, and then one of the coolest things in this, and I use them all the time, is the scissors. The scissors are actually really functional and they're like spring-loaded and you can actually cut stuff with this. So every tool on here really is really quite usable. Super light. I mean, you can fit this in usually in a knife sheet if you have an extra little section in a knife sheet. So... Love me this Gerber dime. Really did it right. This is like my third one because I always lose them. Uh, next up, if I only could carry one, like if I couldn't carry a companion blade, I would definitely say next up would be the Leatherman Pulse. Uh, again, I'm, I'm sort of referencing this to being outdoors. And, you know, if you, could, if you only had the one tool with you. Now, a lot of people hated this because it has these locking this weird locking mechanism where you have to draw back on these to unlock a thing or to or to put your tools back in to the multi-tool. But that being said, 
all the tools on this are excellent. It's very light. It's only like right over five ounces. So you're not going to be adding a lot of bulk to your package. You can definitely carry this as an everyday tool. It has tons of function. You know, it has the ruler on the back for measuring things out. It has an actually good file you know, with a coarse and a rough side. Um, and then on both sides, you can do notches with this file. Really, really good file. Um, a sort of odd all, almost like a like a flathead thing here. Now, again, this you know the, the downside of these older uh, Leatherman tools is they're a little harder to deploy. But quite honestly, when I'm working with a multi tool, I don't need speed of deployment. Um, that's kind of like a little all hole puncher, even a tiny little flathead. Then there's a really really good Phillips head. I mean, like a functional Phillips head. This has gotten me out of jams many many times. <coughs> And then a uh, bottle opener, or a can opener, I should say. Can opener, you know, bottle opener, you know, double purpose. It's a little sharp, so you have to be a little careful when you're opening a bottle and just not puncture it. But can opener, bottle opener, very functional. And one of the things, you know, this tool does lock, too. So you're not going to cut yourself with, when your blade's open or anything like that. But the thing that a lot of people didn't like about this tool was you have to pull these back. I don't think it's a big deal, you know, to put your tools back in. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's check out the tools on the other side. Now the pliers on this, no spring loaded, you know, completely manual, but they really come to a fine point so you can get more delicate task done. Uh, you know, the wire cutters down at the bottom are good. You can see this one's got a little ding in it already, but it's good. They're strong. You know, Leatherman has very, very good quality American made tools. And yeah, this, this tool is going to last you forever. Let's see what else we got here. Best part of this, I mean, look at that. That's a that's a real blade right there. That's a functional blade. Now I wish it opened to the outside so you'd have the full circumference. Wish the blade was facing that way. But that being said, that's a real blade. No dumb serrations or anything like that. It's very sharp. I mean, you can actually, if you had to, get fine work done with that. You know, yeah, you can do feather sticking on wood. Or <coughs> I have full confidence in this blade, and it's it's probably my favorite blade on any multi-tool, uh, very functional, and you know, other than the than the pliers, which are always the main thing of a multi-tool, the, the blade is going to be your number one, and like I said, if I only had one, I would carry the pulse, because it's lightweight and all the tools are functional. Let's see what else we got here. Alright, you got a couple of flathead uh, drivers here, so two different ones there. One's a little thicker, one's a little thinner. I don't really think you needed to include two if they only they're both very good, but I, I, I don't see really see the reasoning behind including two of these. Uh, I just feel like it's a little bit overkill. I think they probably could have substituted another tool in there. And once again, the scissors on this are legit. I can absolutely use these for anything. These scissors are not cut, you know even larger uh, pieces of paper and, and uh, light fabric and done paint repairs and patches and stuff like that with these. So, yeah, man. Leatherman Pulse, great all-around tool. Um, kind of gets a bad rap. Shouldn't. Real good tool. And it's a Leatherman. I mean, this thing's going to be there, you know, through thick or thin. Next up, I have, this is the cheapest tool of the bunch, even though you can find all these, like I found this Pulse used for like 25 bucks, and yeah, I think they were 60 or 70 when they came out. Now, best value of the bunch, I would say, has got to be this Gonzo. Um, it is, I forget the name of it, I, they remade it now, and it's like the Gonzo 220 or something like that. But um, it's a pretty, one thing I will say about this is, when I ordered this, I got this from Ally Express, you know, it's Chinese. Uh, site is that they advertised it as you know complete 440 tool blah 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 it is not it's actually made out of a 420 or let me see you're probably even 2cr mov so that's a cheap chinese steel so it's a little softer so if you really 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 were doing heavy heavy duty task with this it could fail you but value wise this thing for 20 bucks let me show you what you get here so you get the tool Move these out of the way for a moment here. You get the tool, you get a set of bits, and you get a really nice, you know, case here with a little belt thing. So and it's a nice sheath too. So anyway, 
I'll have more on that in a minute. But so getting into this tool, yeah, the pliers real strong, spring loaded. I mean, you could do, you could get a lot of torque on these. Uh, you know, the wire cutters are there, but they are not. Uh, you know, that like I said, that steel is a softer steel. So doing anything like real hard core, you know, you know, snipping nails and stuff with this, you know, you know, it's it's I would say do at your own risk. Um, your release here is on both sides of the back and out Gonzo. For those of you who aren't familiar, they make a lot of knives. They make some really good quality stuff, and they make some crap. But they also are an, an OEM, an original equipment manufacturer that makes stuff for a lot of people. They've even made stuff for Gerber. Um, some of the stuff that people don't like, like some of those bare grills things and blah, blah, blah. So let's take a look at the tool set of this uh, multi-tool. You have a saw. So let's see, is that a locking saw? So it is actually locking, which is kind of cool on a $20 tool. And that is your release. So you have a saw. You have a dual bottle opener, can opener. Functional. I've used it all. The saw I haven't really used, so I really couldn't tell you much about it. Pretty damn good Phillips. It does the job. Let's get these other tools away so you can actually see it. See? Look at that. I almost, I almost chopped, up, chopped myself up already. Let's go here. Let's put this down. I see that does not lock. The Phillips does not lock, but you know, it's it's in there pretty tight. The build quality is pretty good on this. Let's see what else we got in here. And again, this is one of those annoying multi-tools where you have to pull out the other stuff to deploy the other tools. There's like a weird awl, and it's sort of a blade, too. So you could actually probably do some, some other things with that. But again, that's all in a pinch. You know, I'm sure you could chop up, you know, kindling or twigs or I don't even know what what else you would use it for, but whatever. The the Philip I would say the Phillips on that and the can of bottle opener are really good. I've used them for both, and uh, they've been good. So let's get to this one now. To the other side, a file. It's an okay file. Again, it's it's. A softer steel, I don't really know what you can use that file for, maybe for your nails, which, no. <clears throat> this is a tool I think I would just, like here I have a rehearsal studio business here, so I keep this around for do little guitar repairs and stuff like that, uh, and it hasn't let me down, I, I really like, uh, it, it's a really versatile tool, I mean, for 20 bucks, man, and it's pretty tough, I mean, I haven't, I, I use it a lot, so, this is actually a really decent blade. A nice, looks like a hollow ground blade. And this is, turns out I found that after I bought the tool, that this was actually the only thing made out of 440. Um, if it is or it isn't, who the hell knows. But it's a good blade. It's a functional blade. You can do fine work with this. There's no dumb serrations on it or anything like that. But And that does lock. No, it does not lock. So that's, you know, eh. But again, 20 bucks, man, you know, um, hold on. And then probably the coolest part and the thing that is very surprising for a $20 tool is you have the little driver and that's where these come into play. And you got little hex things and Phillips and flatheads and, but let's see if we can get this out. All right. So one of the coolest things is you have this, you know, driver bit here. That pops right on there, and then you can use any of these. You can use one of the Phillips heads, and they're interchangeable. And on a and on a twenty dollar tool, and that is it is magnetically held into place at the top of the little driver thing. This part is not, but you can absolutely get in there and get some work done with this. So that's really cool, and I use that a lot. And to have that included in a, in a tool for twenty dollars. I gotta say, as far as value, you know, just to have one, an extra one around, uh, you know, getting this Gonzo tool, or and they have a lot of other tools that are in the same sort of price range. Sorry, my cloth is coming undone here. Um, that are functional and just having one around, I mean, it can't hurt. Really cool, very good value for the money. So these kind of slip right back in, you know, folds up. This is the only one, by the way, I have. It has the sheath. 
So these I bought used. Last but not least, um, it's actually the most expensive tool of the bunch. And this is a classic American tool, the SOG Power Lock. And yeah, it's a really heavy duty tool, but a really heavy tool. So having this as an everyday carry is a little bit much. Um, it's a mixed bag on this. You know, pliers wise, absolutely the best pliers of any of these multi tools. You can actually accomplish heavy tasks with these. You can strip wires with these. You can cut through nails on these. This is a heavy, heavy duty tool. Uh, the pliers on this are clearly, you know, you got the wire stripper down there, you know, nail cutters, uh, you know, they get pretty fine. Best pliers on any multi tool, period, even to this day. You know, you can get, you have way more extension, so you can get way more torque and just dig in with these. So, in that respect, yes, for specifically the pliers, can't go wrong with this rules. Now, these kind of have these annoying guards, which, you know, you can pop off. You know, if you want, um, so you don't cut your hands on the blades that, that, that come out and stuff. There is, uh, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place here. Your locking mechanisms are here. And you just push those in. And on the other side. And it has the ruler running along the entire width of the multi-tool. It looks great in this oxidized black, too. But let's go through some of the tools here. Now this saw is a good saw. You can have, I've used this saw. That is a good tool. That is, but see, one of the things I don't like about this tool, and it's why I'm not using it all the time, that's supposed to be locked right now. You know, it's supposed to be locked in a place, and it's not. And that really bothers me. It failed me when I was trying to uh, cut a can open or something like that with it. Um, but it's a good saw, and it will work really, really well. File, very, you can see it's still dirty. A really good file, even better than the Leatherman Pulse. So a very good file, fine and coarse side. Uh, the can over, it's trash. Failed me when I was trying to use it. You know, lock did not hold into place. Uh, it, it's useless. It's a piece of shit. Uh, let's see. The Phillips driver here, very good. And again, you have to deploy all your, the Phillips driver is very, very good. And, but again, you know, the lock, it just fails, and it's called a SOG power lock. You know, a flathead driver, and then sort of an all, another all hole punching kind of thing, which, you know, works fine. But again, the, the tool set on this is a little disappointing for what is considered a high-end multi-tool. This These, I think when they came out, were like 80, 90 bucks, something like that. The blade is good. It's got um, serrations on it. Now, let's see if the, if the lock is working on the blade side. So it looks like it is working on the blade side. Right, so hold on. So let's pull the, let's deploy the blade. All right, so that is locked in. That's locked in good. That ain't going anywhere. This blade is sharp. While I was bitching about serrations on the other blade, I kind of like them on this. It's The blade is good. I like the Pulse's blade better because it's just a straight edge. But I can get like little, you know, if I want to tear something up a little bit, these are good. It's good for slicing and, and dicing. So uh, I do kind of like the blade on this a little bit. Scissors on this are trash. They suck. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Again, for a high-end tool, disappointing. Let's, let's see if I can even see. You can see what a pain he has to. This driver, I think there was a driver thing attached to this, uh, you know, because it's not a flat head. I can't exactly say what that was originally for, but it looks like there was something that was maybe attached to that, because you know, you know, here's a flat head that is a good flat head. Good flat head, and then a bottle opener, which is, works just fine. Yeah, obviously, this was like a, a something to attach a, a socket to or something like that. Now, let's get to the scissors. The scissors of this are fucking junk, man. I mean, SOG. Well, are they even are they jacked up right now? I mean, this might have been put away wrong. Look, I can't even get them to... I can't even get them to come out. I mean, these are... I don't even know what is going on here. Maybe this was put out the wrong way. I can't even tell you. Oh, well, that's a new thing. Can't even get them to the. 
It look oh, it looks like the wire has been trapped, and maybe these were put away the wrong way. But again, it's just fussy, and even when they were working, they just weren't very useful anyway. It durability wise, yeah, it's a heavy tool. This it's 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 you know this tool you're buying for this, you know the wire strippers, everything in there is rock solid. The tools in it are average at best, and for the price and the weight of the, of the thing, I gotta admit, I never use this tool anymore. Um, if I have something around the house that I need to really need a lot of torque in, you know, I mean, I'll use an actual pliers or a C-wrench or something like that. So, the SOG Power Lock, I don't know, I, mean, it's, 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 I love SOG products. Uh, this, this is kind of disappointing. Um... And even since the last time I opened it, you know, the, the, now the scissors I can't get to deploy. You know, I'm probably doing something stupid, but I would never carry this with me every day. Super heavy, not a ton of utility and function other than the pliers, which granted, most people use them for. So if I had to rate them, you know, uh, favorite, just for my personal use, favorite to least favorite, I'm telling you, this one here, the Gerber Dime, man, super functional. Every tool works. I carry it with me every day. It's super lightweight. I carry it with me camping. Great for little repairs, small task. I don't leave home without it. That's an everyday carry piece. Next up, I would have the Gerber, I mean, I'm sorry, the Leatherman Pulse. Again, great tool set, pretty lightweight for an almost full-size multi-tool. Very functional. The tools in it are all really good. Uh, you know, roller, great blade on it. Uh, yeah, the locking system's a little bit annoying, but it locks, it works, it's dependable, the pliers are good. Next up, I would say the Gonzo. You know, the Gonzo, what is it, the 2015 PRB? I, I can't, I'm, my apologies for not remembering the model number on it. Value, that's, that's what it says it all with the Gonzo. It's a great deal, 20 bucks. You know, put it away in a drawer, keep it away at you know, your work facility. You know, it comes with a nice sheath, tool set, functionality, utility, 20 bucks, can't go wrong. And least, last but not least, I gotta say the SOG Power Lock, um, it's kind of been retired here and I'm not using it a whole lot anymore because it's just not super functional other than the great pliers. Anyway, I hope, uh, I'm glad you bared with me on that. I know it's a, a, I'm not exactly speaking in the most technical terms or anything, I'm just you know, relaying my experiences with these four tools from, you know, pretty big companies, you know, Gerber, Leatherman, Saad, Gonzo. And uh, I hope you found it helpful and uh, you enjoyed the video. Please, if you did, even if you didn't, you know, like, subscribe, uh, just, just get this channel going. So hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.